you know, you two could help. Yeah, it's so much easier and so much more enjoyable watching you do it. No, I mean, but seriously, I'm like totally winging it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. <sighs> Today on Invention, these two knuckleheads are going to teach you how to change a tire on a trailer. G'day, welcome to Avention. All jokes aside, when you're trailering horses around, the reality of blowing a tire on the trailer will catch up with you sooner or later. Now you always have the option to call someone to come and help you out, but today I'm gonna to show you just how easy it is to change a tire by yourself. So before we get started, let's talk about a couple of safety precautions. First thing is you never know when this is gonna to happen to you. If you are on the interstate or on a main highway when this happens, obviously the first thing to do is to put your hazards on, try and get over to the shoulder and get out of the way of oncoming traffic. If you can, you can hopefully limp along to the next exit so that the traffic isn't whizzing by you as you're trying to change it. Now, you've got a little bit of time before your tire completely shreds apart, but if you do get really stuck in a tight spot, say near a bridge or something like that, stay in your vehicle, get over as far as you can, and probably your best bet is to call the state police and let them send a patrol car out so he can put his lights on uh, to stop you getting hit by a truck. It's very dangerous on the side of the interstate and you don't realize quite how fast they're going until you're outside. So uh, that would be the safest option there. Next thing is, is common sense. Leave the horses on the trailer. Don't try and take them off and swap them around on the side of the interstate. The idea of having a loose horse with all those uh, traffic and cars going by is not a nice one. So leave them on the trailer, especially if they're calm and happy. Next thing is, is also to try and leave the trailer attached to the truck. That's the safest, most stable place for, the, for it to be in that kind of situation. Um, if you're in a less busy spot, like in a town or something like that, a car park or a parking lot uh, in a Walmart or something like that is probably your safest, least busy, and also your flatter surface to work on. All right, before I hit my tools of the tray, let's go to a Shramo shout out. This week's shout out goes to EquiEd, located in Sonoma County, California. These guys are an educationally based therapeutic writing center that have been serving students for over 20 years. Check them out at equied.org. Welcome back guys. So for those of you out there that are a little bit overwhelmed about this, just take a breath. I'm gonna do this as simply as possible. And it doesn't matter who you are, boy, girl, old, young, you should be able to do this, no worries at all. All right, so let's get started on our tools of the trade. So it's a good idea to keep a, uh, a box here. First thing I've got is this high-vis vest. Now you might think that this is kind of dorky, but to prove how cool it is, I might just give this sexy little number a spin for the rest of the tutorial. You know what, when you're stuck on the side of the road in the night in the pouring rain and the trucks are whizzing by, you want everything you can to help you be seen and not get squished. Alrighty, so let's take a look here. First things first, tire wrench. Uh, this needs to be the same size as the nuts on your uh, trailer. So make sure you, if you do have one in your trailer, just make sure that it fits if you haven't ever used it before. So we have that. Second of all, is this great tool. So basically what this does is it eliminates the need for a jack, so having to get under the trailer. And you can just drive the trailer right up onto it and it is going to be a really, really useful tool. For a small bit of plastic, having this in the trailer can save you tons of time and it's actually much safer in a lot of ways. We've got that there. All right, next, a little uh, hazard triangle thing. Um, it's amazing how much people don't want to hit these when they're coming up behind you, but they'd be uh, happy to hit you. So chuck this out, you know, a little ways behind the trailer to help give people the idea that they've got to try and give you some room. Um, and then here I've got a more conventional jack, which is kind of the usual 
you know, uh, pump it up and this here is going to, uh, when that's done up tight, when you pump it, it's going to go up. When it's loose, there's no pressure building up, it's not going to go anywhere. You can also screw this to help give you a little bit more height. Now, the problem with a regular little jack like this, which is probably what you'll find in the back of your car, is that when you're doing it on the trailer, you've got horses on the back, and when they're moving around, there's always the danger of the trailer slipping off the jack. Um, so if you could, try and get, get yourself one of those. Now, if you do use a small jack, or if that's all you've got, what I would recommend is putting it underneath, uh, putting a chock of wood underneath um, to make sure that it's as stable as possible, not in a little divot. Um, so you need, it's a good idea to have a few bits of wood. I've got a ton here. A, to chop the tires up so the trailer doesn't roll when you're doing all this. Also too, just to, they're just useful to have. You'll find a use for it somehow. All right, that's pretty much your most, real, your most important stuff to start with. Um, some of the other stuff that you could have optional, WD-40, so um, if you're really small or your, your tire nuts have been on there for a long time, this can really help loosen them up, so it's a good idea to have that around anyway. Uh, a torch or a flashlight, um, this is helpful if you're in the dark. Um, and then I've also got a fire extinguisher here in case I start a fire. Uh, and then also too, in the back of your car, you've probably got a, a tool set, or if you don't, you've probably got one lying around, or a socket set. Um, you can also use this to get off uh, tires as well, but chances are the size of the sockets that you have in one like this probably aren't going to be big enough, but it's never a bad thing to have around. Okay, that's about all our most important stuff, so let's get started on changing this tire. Step one, put the truck in park, apply the parking brake, chock the wheels and position the ramp. Step two, remove the spare tire. Normally there's only one nut fastening it to the front of the trailer. Step three. Now, loosen the nuts. If you're really struggling to get them undone, try applying some WD-40. If not, find someone stronger. Step four, try not to hurt yourself and swear. <laughs> Step five, remove the chocks, drive or reverse onto the ramp jack, and once there, don't forget to put the truck back in park and reapply the chocks. Step six, undo the nuts and remove the bad tire. If you've really blown your tire out badly, Maybe put on a pair of gloves to stop little bits of wire from the belting getting into your hands. Step seven, take a little twirl in your sexy high-vis vest. You're halfway there. Step eight, carefully put the spare back on, paying attention to not drop the wheel on the threads of the bolts and screw nuts back on finger tight. Step nine, remove the chocks again. Let the trailer back down off the ramp and tighten the nuts in a star pattern. When you're done, be sure to double check everyone to make sure they're fully tight. Step 10, last but not least, pick up the tools, the bad tire. Remember, in about 50 miles, be sure to check the nuts again to make sure none of them have loosened and shoo away any onlookers wanting to pat the pony. Shoo, shoo, go on, quick, get, get, shoo. Okay guys, hopefully you're able to follow along those simple steps. Remember, when you're in a high stress situation, you may forget simple things like putting the tr truck in park or where you put your uh, wheel nuts. So just take your time, take a breath, and you'll be on your way in no time. But before we close the episode out, let's go to Steph for an invention tip of the day. Hey guys, this is my invention tip of the day. Before you head off to your next show, make sure you check your tires. You want to make sure that you have plenty of tread, there's no cracking, and it's hard enough. You'll see here on this tire that there's not enough tread, and it's a little soft, so you want to make sure that everything looks all right. This one here, plenty of tread, hard enough, no cracking. This will be the ticket. So, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week.